In this lesson, you are going to learn how to create chart reports, which in terms of visual appeal, are better than just pure text, but they are still limited regarding the type of data they can represent and regarding the way they present it. Fortunately, there is another type of report that really excel when it comes to presenting data in a visual way, and they are the chart reports, which are the topic of this lesson. I'm going to build a report of employees per department that will look like this. This was made with Excel and our goal for this lesson is to learn how to create a similar chart report in SQL Developer. In this class I'm only going to show you how to create bar charts, but SQL Developer offers many other types of charts. Some of them might be appropriate for one situation, and some other for another one, but the way in which they work and how you create them is basically the same. So, after you complete this lesson, I encourage you to try some other chart types to get an idea of the options you will have available for your reporting needs. Okay, there are three concepts we need to understand to be able to work with charts in SQL Developer. They are the group, the series and the value. In this graph, the groups are the department names that we see here, so they are what appear here along the horizontal axis. In the data from which this graph was created, they are here in this column. In Excel, and in other applications, these are called the categories, but in SQL Developer they are known as the groups. The series are what tells us what we are representing in the graph. In this case, we have only one, and it is the employees count. So, because we have only one series, we have only one bar per group. So, for example, if we wanted to graph the number of employees and the budget for each department, we would have two series, and thus, two bars for each group. And the value is the actual data we are representing, which defines the size of the bar. In this example, the shipping department has 45 employees, so the bar is 45 units tall. So, looking at the source data of the chart, you can think of the series as the title of the data, and the value is the actual data. Makes sense? Great. So, now that we have the bases covered and we know what we want to build, let's go to SQL Developer to create the report. I'm going to create a new report, and I'm going to call it my first chart and here in the style I'm going to select chart. Okay. Now, for the query. This is how SQL Developer needs the data by default. The first column must be the group. So, in this case, it has to be the department name. Since I need the department name and I will need the count of employees of the department, I need to join the employees and departments tables. So this has to be the department name. The second column must be the series. And what is the series in this chart? The number of employees, or the employees count right? But remember that it is not the actual number, but like the description of the number, so I will write the series as a literal and it will be employees count. And the third column must be the actual value, so that will be the number of employees in this case. So, how do I get it? Yes, of course, I get it using the count function. So, okay, this comes from employees join departments. On department ID. And I have to group by department name, because I want the count per department. Okay, I will select a connection, so that I can preview my report. And there it is. That was easy. Right? Okay. Here in the property section, there are several things I can customize. Here I can choose from a big number of chart types. This is a vertical cluster, and this is how it would look like if I had five series. If I change it to a vertical stack, all of the series show in the same bar, as segments of different colors. 
This is just an example, but if I go to the data section and I select this use live data check box, I can see how it will look like with my actual data. Since I have only one series, a stack looks the same as a cluster, but with more series they would look different. So, going back to the main properties section, besides the chart type, I can change the style in some other options. Here I can add titles and footnote and decide how I want them to look. And here in the plot area and the two axis, I can make some additional customizations. I'm not going to do anything else, but I encourage you to try different things and see what they do. So, I'm going to click on Apply to save the report. If I now run it, here is my beautiful report, which looks very similar to the one we created in Excel. So, mission accomplished. Now, adapting the query to comply with the columns that are required to build the graph was easy in this case. But what happens if I want to add another series, to show not only the number of employees, but also the number of distinct positions or jobs in the department? Let's review the column requirements. The first column must be the group. The second column must be the series. And the third column must be the values. So, I have only one column for the series, and only one column for the values. This means that my query would have to return two rows for each department, one in which the series is the count of employees, with its corresponding data in the values column, and one in which the series is the count of distinct positions. How can I do that? Well, I could use a union of two queries, the first one would be the one we already have, and the second one would be very similar, but with a different series column, and instead of a count star, it would have to have a count of the distinct job bids. Or I could get both counts in a single query and then unpivot the results to separate the two counts into different rows. But, fortunately, we are not forced to comply with the default column requirements. We can get the data in some other format or column distribution, and then we can tell SQL Developer where it has to take the data from. So, forgetting about the column requirements, I can modify my query to return the two counts and series in different columns, and that would be easier. So, I will have another literal for the distinct positions. And here I will add another call to count, but now of the distinct job bids. And that's it. I'm going to select a connection here. And I'm going to go to Property, Data and I'm going to select this to use Live Data. And now here in the mapping I click this button to fetch the column names. And there is usually going to be an empty row here in the mappings, but if it is not there I would click this plus button to add one. Here I am going to select the group, which is the department name. The series will be the number of employees, and the value will be the count star. And now I add another mapping for the second series. Here the group will be the department name again. The series will be the distinct sessions. And the value will be the count distinct job ID. And now I just refresh the report and there it is. Let's save it. So, using the column mappings it is easier to add more series. Okay, I just want to repeat what I said at the beginning of this lesson. We used a bar chart for this example, but SQL Developer offers many other options that could make more sense in other situations. For example, if you wanted to build a graph to show how much of the total budget of a company is assigned to each department, then a pie chart would make a lot of sense.
but if you wanted to show sales numbers over time, then a pie wouldn't probably be the best option. A bar or a line chart would probably make more sense in that case. So, after you finish this lesson, take some time to explore and try some other graph types, so that, when the need to display information in a different graphical way appears, you have an idea of the options that are available in SQL Developer. And in case you were wondering, yes, charts can also have child reports. The child will be refreshed when you click on a group in the chart. That's pretty awesome, if you ask me.